Good morning and welcome to KCPS Homeroom. I'm Justin Robinson. Again, today is for first and second grade students. We will start off with reading, then a math class, science class, intro to Chinese, and finally STEM. Hope you enjoy class today. Let's get ready to learn with Mr. Hall and reading. Hello everyone. My name is Mr. Hall and I'm a teacher at the African Center College Preparatory Academy. Today, we are going to talk about story elements. Story elements are the different parts of a story. We are also going to read the story Buzzy the Bumblebee and identify the characters, which are the people or animals in a story. We're going to examine the setting, which is where the story takes place. And we're going to look at the plot, which is the beginning, middle and end of a story by retelling it. Let's go ahead and get started. Buzzy the Bumblebee. One sunny day in a beautiful garden, there sat a bumblebee named Buzzy. His stripes were black and yellow and his coat was rather fuzzy. Look at Buzzy. Buzzy liked to fly like all bumblebees. He danced with the flowers and swayed with the breeze. He also liked to read and thought himself worldly and wise. So Buzzy was startled when he read Bumblebees weren't made to fly. He read it over and over. Bumblebees weren't made to fly, according to studies and research, and it went on to explain why. Their wingspan is wrong. Their bodies are too big. Buzzy was confused. He thought, I'm not a pig. Buzzy couldn't believe what he had read and kept thinking, can these facts be true? I've been flying all this time and I shouldn't have been able to? He tried to make his wings work by pumping with all of his might, but the words he had read were stuck in his head and now something just wasn't right. Buzzy was stranded on top of a flower, longing to fly away. His heart still knew how, but his head had forgotten the way. Buzzy was scared. How will I get down now that I can't fly anymore? I'll have to climb down, he decided, something he had never done before. With book and toe and little heart pounding, Buzzy tentatively took the first step, then very, very slowly down the flower he crept. Buzzy's foot started to slip and he felt himself letting go. Oh no! Buzzy just fell off the flower. Thank goodness for a leaf, it helped cushion the blow. Dazed, Buzzy slowly sat up thinking, what should I do now? My home is so far away, I've got to get there somehow. Two dragonflies saw Buzzy walking and they asked, what's wrong with you? Buzzy sadly told them, my flying days are through. They didn't understand this problem because their wings worked just fine. Would you walk with me, Buzzy asked. No, thank you, they declined. Look at them. Feeling very envious and even a little mad, Buzzy had a funny feeling inside. He wanted what they had. Envious means kind of like jealous, to want something that someone else has. Sometimes writers do this really cool thing where they write inside the story what the meaning of a word means. Heavy hearted, he trudged on, anxious to get home. Buzzy needed his family, so he felt so all alone. Just then, Buzzy saw a stream and cried out in frustration. Now that I can't fly anymore, will I ever reach my destination? Every problem has a solution, his mother always said. Buzzy had to find an answer. He'd have to use his head. At that very moment, a flower petal drifted by. It gently floated to the river's edge as Buzzy let out a sigh. <sighs> Buzzy had an idea. I need something that will float. Looking at the pedal in the water, he thought, that could be my boat. He picked up the Blue Jay's feather and cautiously pushed himself out. When Buzzy realized the pedal would work, he gave a joyful shout. As he safely reached the other side, Buzzy was filled with relief. Yeah, he's happy, he's good. That is, until he saw the tall, tall grass 
and was suddenly overcome with grief. Sadly, he remembered the days when above the grass he would soar. Once again, he thought, he thought, what will I do now that I can't fly anymore? Peering through the thick green grass, Buzzy thought, this just isn't fair. About to give up, he heard a voice say, don't stop, you're almost there. He looked up to see where he came from, but his eyes only met the sun. Muster mustering all the energy he had left, Buzzy began to run. Buzzy burst through the door with a tear in his eye. Mom and Dad, why didn't you tell me bumblebees weren't made to fly? Why, Buzzy, they said, you certainly can fly. Until now, that is. And do you know why? You're doubting yourself. Fear is blocking the way. Listen to your heart, Buzzy, not with what other, others say. Ignore labels and limits. They seldom do good. They make you think you can't when inside you knew you could. Buzzy thought about what they had said and knew his parents were right. It's belief in ourselves that helps us take flight. Quickly, Buzzy ran out the door and looked up at the sky. Bursting with confidence and desire, Buzzy shouted, I wanna fly. Buzzy's wings fluttered and his spirit began to soar. Buzzy knew he would be all right. He would fly once more. Buzzy's pretty confident right now. He's pretty excited. And sure enough, Buzzy flew. And do you know why? By believing that he could, Buzzy was able to fly. What a fantastic story. Now, let's work on identifying the story elements in the story. So, let's talk about the characters. Who are the characters in the story? Let's think about that. It may be helpful to go back and look back through the story and retell it. So, I'm gonna look back through the story and I remember that Buzzy was at the top of a fence at the very beginning and then he was started to read this book and as he read the book, the book said that bumblebees weren't made to fly and then after he read that book, he was on top of a flower and he got stuck and then he fell down and then he had all these other challenges that he faced like he saw some dragonflies and he really wanted their wings because he was able to see them fly. He crossed a river and when he got across the river, there was this tall, tall grass. So he was suddenly overcome with grief and he felt like he couldn't do it. And then after he got across the grass, he was able to make it home and he asked his parents why he couldn't fly anymore and they explained it to him. and. Uh, they gave him some confidence and encouraged him, and then he was able to fly. So I just retold the story. Now let's go back and identify the characters. Who were the characters in the story? If you said Buzzy the Bumblebee, you were correct. Maybe you might have also said his parents, Mom and Dad. Let's talk a little bit about the setting. The setting is where the story takes place. And in this story, it seems like the, the setting was outside in many places, like across the river or um, at his home near the tree. There were many places, but I would say the setting is definitely outside. So we're gonna put a picture of the setting on our chart. Now, let's talk about the plot. Remember, the plot is what happens at the beginning, middle, and end of a story. So let's think, in the beginning, Buzzy had read that book that said bumblebees weren't made to fly. But before that, he was able to fly successfully. So let's put that down as the beginning of the story. Buzzy was able to fly at the beginning, but then he read that book and he wasn't able to fly anymore. Now let's talk about what happened in the middle of the story. In the middle of the story, I can honestly say that Buzzy had so many challenges. There was the tall, tall grass, there was the flower, there was the dragonflies. Um, it was just so much going on. So it was very, very hard for him. He wasn't flying, he was walking. So that's what happened in the middle of the story. Let's put that there. 
And at the end of the story, Buzzy learned to believe in himself. He was able to reconnect with his parents and they told him to believe in himself and he was able to fly. So he got the confidence that he needed to move on. I hope that you took away a lot from the lesson today and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much for joining me as we learned about story elements. Have a great week. Hello, my name is Mrs. Overish and this is Math Mania for first and second graders. I am so glad you're here today. Let's learn something new in math. Today we're going to be talking about expanded form. All you need today is a pencil, a piece of paper, and maybe some markers and crayons if you have them. You don't need them, but it'll add a little spice to your work. Let's go over our I can statement today. Our I can statement says, I can use base 10 models to write a number in expanded form. Let's break this apart to make it a little bit easier to understand. That first word that really is throwing me off is the word models. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear the word models, I think of people in magazines and people wearing fancy clothes. But we're not talking about people in fancy clothes in math. So, what do I mean when I say base 10 models? Well, a model is something that represents or something that looks like something else. Maybe an example. So when I'm using base 10 models, well, we know that this is a base 10 hundreds flat. We know this is a base 10 tens rod. But these are models. These aren't the real thing, right? And so I'm using little paper models. You're going to be drawing them at home. So we're using different ways to represent base 10 today. So we're going to use that word models to describe it. You also see that we're going to write a number in expanded form, and all that is is showing the value for each digit in a number. Let's talk about how we're going to do that. First, we're going to use some different math tools today. First math tool is our place value mat. We're going to be organizing our hundreds, tens, and ones into this place value mat. Then we also have our graphic organizer, and our graphic organizer today is a place value robot hopefully the robot talk either goes or gets better. We'll see. So our place value robot, was that better? Helps us organize all of our new thinking and our new numbers in math. Sometimes we think about graphic organizers in reading like Venn diagrams or T-charts, but we use them in math to do the exact same thing, just to organize our thinking. All right, let's try our first number. Our first number, is 147. So remember last week how we talked about when we see a new number? It's kind of like seeing a new word. Say it's slow and we can hear the values and we can hear each part of it. So we have 147. So I first hear 100. So I know on my place value mat, I'm going to put 100 in the hundreds column. So I have 100. Remember our hundreds flat equals 100 ones or 10 tens rods. I come back to my number and I say it slowly again, 147. So I see there's a four in my tens place. Four tens equals 40. So I can put four tens rods in my tens place. Boop. And boop. And then the last one, 147. Well, seven is just telling me that there's seven in the ones place. So I'm going to put seven little ones cubes up on the board to represent my seven ones. Now before we go on to our expanded form, let's talk about what's going to come next on our graphic organizer. So, so first, first we have our number in number form. That's kind of like normal form. When I tell you to write the number 147, this is most likely what you're going to write. But there are a lot of other ways we can write numbers too. One of those ways is base 10 form. We practiced this last week with drawing our squares for our hundreds flats, our lines for our tens rods, and our little cubes for our ones. So I went ahead and I did the number 147 in base 10 form on my graphic organizer. Now the last spot is, ex is expanded form. So let's write 147 in expanded form. form. Right. I have one 100 in my hundreds place, so I can write 100 plus my four tens. Four tens we know is 10, 20, 30, 40, plus 
my seven ones. When I add my expanded form all together, I get my number in number form. Right, so 147. This way I can see all the values of the different numbers in this three digit number. Now I have expanded form of 147 on my place value robot. Now you're gonna make your own graphic organizer at home. And this is where you need your piece of paper. At the top of your piece of paper, you're gonna draw a small rectangle. Try to make it in the middle of our paper. This is going to be the head of our robot. Next, you are gonna fold up the bottom of your paper just so it reaches to the bottom of the head of your place value robot. And this crease is going to draw this line right here in the middle of our robot. And then we have our paper and we're gonna fold it just in half long ways. This is going to make this line right here. This is just helping to keep our work really nice and even and neat. And that way when we open it back up, we can draw our place value robot's body and then we can draw our lines. When you are finished, your work should look something like this. I have three spots, one for the number form, one for base 10 form, and one for expanded form. And then I decorated it. I added some arms, some legs, a funny little robot head. Now let's go ahead and add a number to your place value robot. The number is 356. Again, say it slow, 356. Make sure you add this number to your number form box on your place value robot. I'm gonna put it on my place value mat. So I hear 300, so I know I'm gonna need to use three hundreds flats, 350, five tens, so five or 50 in my tens column and 356, so I know I'm gonna need six little ones cubes. You're gonna wanna draw your base 10 form using 300s flats, five tens rods, and six ones cubes. Now let's write it in expanded form. In expanded form, I see, I'm gonna start with my hundreds column. I have three hundreds, three hundreds is 300. So I'm gonna write 300 plus my five tenths, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, plus my six ones. Now I can see the value of each digit in my three digit number. And I know it's gonna equal my number form. Go ahead and add 356 in expanded form to your place value robot. All right, let's try another one together. We have the number 468. Go ahead and add that to your number form box on your place value robot. 468, when I hear 400, I know that I'm gonna put 400 flats which means that you're gonna draw four squares in the base 10 form box for our number 468. Then I hear 460. 60 I know is six groups of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, and 68, eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My ones are all over the place, aren't they? <laughs> so now on your base 10 form, you're gonna have four hundreds flats drawn, six tens rods, and eight cute little ones cubes. I don't know why they're my favorite to draw, because they're adorable and small. Now let's write our number in expanded form. 
Well, I look at the number and I see that I have four hundreds flats. So if I have four hundreds, I know that that number is four hundred. Plus my tens column, I have six tens. When I read the number, I heard 460, so I know that six tens is that number 60. Plus my eight ones. Now I have the values of each part of my number, and I know it's gonna equal my number in number form, or normal form. So now you're gonna add 400 plus 60 plus eight, to your expanded form box on your place value robot. Now, now I have a challenge for you today. I'm gonna give you a number in expanded form and I wanna see if you can put this on your place value robot and also fill in the number form and the base 10 form. So by looking at your expanded form, are you able to put the number back into number form? Are you able to then draw those base 10 models? I definitely think you can. Here's the number in expanded form, and I want you to write it down and see if you can fill out the rest of your place value robot by knowing the expanded form. Our expanded form is 800 plus 70 plus two. Can you fill out these other spots? All right, boys and girls, that concludes our lesson for today. And now you can say that you can write numbers in expanded form and you can read and write numbers in different ways. Our place value robot is very, very excited for you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Miss Overish and Math Mania, and I'll see you next time. Hello, and welcome back to first and second grade science with Miss Allen. Can anyone remind me what we learned about last week in our lesson? Hmm. If you said our cosmic address in the Milky Way galaxy, you are correct. We learned about the first step in our cosmic address, the Milky Way galaxy. And does anyone remember what the Milky Way galaxy is made up of? billions and billions of stars you are correct today we're gonna go a little deeper into our cosmic address and learn about our solar system we're going to learn about our solar system does anyone already know anything about the solar system I want you to think for a minute about what do you know about the solar system do you know what makes up the solar system if you're thinking planets, you're correct. If you're thinking the sun, you're also correct. Do you know the name of the planet on which we live? I'm gonna give you a hint. It starts with the sound er. Earth, we live on the planet Earth. Today we're going to learn about the solar system. Here is a picture of the solar system. What? Do you notice about it? What is in the middle of the solar system? What are the planets doing? If you notice that the sun is in the middle of the solar system, you're correct. The sun is the center of our solar system. We're going to learn all about the sun next week. What is happening around the sun? I see the planets orbiting. They're going around the sun. Each of the planets has its own orbit or path around the sun. For this lesson today, it's optional to have a blank piece of paper with you and some crayons, pencils, or markers along with that. So we know now that the solar system is comprised of the sun and the objects that orbit around it. Those objects are planets, space debris, asteroids, comets. I have a song for us to learn a little bit more about the solar system. We'll sing this song another time in our lessons, but today we will just learn it. Let's name all the planets that go around the sun. See if you can name them one by one. Let me get my telescope into view. 
so I can name the planets and you can too. There's Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Turn your scope around and you can see some stars. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus too. Neptune, but not Pluto. Doodly do. In our song, we sung about a telescope. What's a telescope? Have you ever used a telescope before? A telescope is a device that lets us see things very far away. It magnifies or makes things larger. If you look up into the sky, can you see the other planets in the solar system? We can use a telescope to sometimes see planets that are very far away from us. Scientists can use it to learn more about the solar system. We don't have a lot of time together today, so I'm going to quickly introduce you to each of our eight planets. I'm going to show you an optional follow-along activity. All right, so here's our follow along for today. I have a piece of paper, I have a black marker, you can also use a pencil, and I have some crayons. We're gonna take our paper, fold it in half, and we're gonna fold it in half one more time. Then we're gonna open up our paper Flatten it down. This has made four sections. One, two, three, four. I've divided the paper into four. Four on each side. Four plus four is eight. So I have eight spots to make my eight planets. I'm going to start with Mercury. We're going to start closest to the sun and end furthest away. So you can go along with me. We're going to write Mercury. I'm going to create a little guide to help you identify the planets. I'm going to check its surface, look at Mercury's surface, kind of draw the texture I see. Mercury is the closest to the sun. I wonder, does that make it hot or does that make it cold? What do you think? Yes, it is a hot planet, Mercury. Next, we have Venus. Put Venus here. The second planet from the sun, Venus. Venus spins backwards. It spins the opposite direction that the other planets spin. Also, did you know that one day on Venus is longer than an entire year on Earth? That's very long. Also, I'm looking at the surface of Venus and it just looks really hot. It looks almost lava-like. Next we have Earth. What do we know about Earth? What do we already know about Earth? Earth, yes, is the planet we live on. I'm looking at the surface of Earth. I see land, I see air, I see water. Earth has just the right conditions to support living things. Animals, plants, other organisms, they can live on Earth. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it has just the right conditions for living things. Next we have the planet Mars. Mars is nicknamed the red planet. Mars. So I'm gonna find some red so I can remember the nickname of Mars being the red planet. Mars. I'm going to turn my page over for the ne next four planets. Jupiter. Do you know anything about Jupiter? It's the biggest planet, so I drew that, drew that one pretty big. Jupiter. Jupiter also has the great red spot. So if you've ever looked at a picture of Jupiter and noticed the red spot, the great red spot, that's a big storm on Jupiter. So I'm gonna add the great red spot. We have Saturn. I bet you recognize Saturn because of its rings. 
Those rings on Saturn are made of ice and rock. And did you know that Saturn is the flattest of all the planets? All the planets are a spherical shape, but Saturn is the flattest. You have Uranus. So what's happening to these planets as we get further away from the sun? Let me give you a hint because I was drawing with warm colors and now I'm drawing with more cool colors. So what can you assume? Yes, the planets are getting colder. The further we get away from the sun, the colder the planets are, they are further from the heat source, which is the sun. Uranus is known as the ice giant, the ice giant. And it rotates sideways. Last, we have Neptune, the furthest planet from the sun, which also makes it the coldest and the windiest planet. So I'm gonna also draw Neptune with cool colors to show that it's a cold planet, Neptune. So now you have a little guidebook of the planets. You can sing our song to it. You can add some of the facts that we learned to your book. But now we all have a little planet book that we can use to identify the different planets. Thank you for joining me this week as we learned a little bit more about our solar system. What did you learn that was new? What's something that maybe you didn't know before, but you do now? Hmm. So thank you for joining me. And next week, we're going to learn about the sun. I will see you then. Have a great day. My name is Jin Yang, and this is the Chinese lesson for grade 1 and grade 2 students. It's also for beginners in learning Chinese. Welcome to our Chinese class. 欢迎学汉语. Today, we are going to go over greetings and expression of courtesy in Chinese. What you will need today is a notebook and a pencil if you need to take a note. Okay, let's us get ready to learn. Before we learn saying hello in Chinese, I have a question for you. How do we say hello in English? How many ways do you know how to greet someone in English? How do you greet your friend? And how do you greet your teacher? In Chinese, we have a different way to say hello to different people. Let's have a look. Listen and see the pictures with me. Ting,我说,请,听,我说。你好。你好。你好。你们好。你们好。你们好。您好您好您好老师好老师好老师好谢谢谢谢 谢谢，不客气，不客气，不客气，再见。
再见，再见。Great listening. Now, are you ready to say Chinese with me? Practice speaking with me. Let's say hello in Chinese. 你好，你好。你好 ，Let's try one more time. 你好，你好 ，Great. Now, practice say 你好 with your parent. Greet each other in Chinese as many times as you can in ten seconds. Miss Yang will greet. We'll practice with you together. 你好，你好，你好。Great. Let's try to say 你们好。We can say 你们好 to greet everyone. When you see people, a group of people, you can say "Hello, everyone" in Chinese. 你们好，你们好，你们好。Let's try one more time. 你们好 ，Excellent. Now let's practice saying 你们好。To our classmates, 你们好，你们好，你们好。Excellent. In this picture, you can see a boy is saying 您好 to someone older than him. So, if you want to say hello politely in Chinese, you can say 您好，您好，您好。Let's practice one more time to say hello politely. 您好，您好。Excellent. Let's say 您好 to our principal. 您好，您好，您好。Let's say 您好 to the doctor. 您好，您好，您好。How would you greet him in Chinese politely? Yes, you can say 您好，您好，您好。Excellent. If you see a teacher, how do you say hello to her or him? You can say. 老师好，老师好。Let's say hello, teacher in Chinese. 老师好，老师好。Very good. Think about how would you greet her in Chinese? Yes, we can say. 老师好，老师好。Now you see, when you see Miss Yang, you can greet Miss Yang. 老师好，老师好。Excellent. Now let's practice speaking. Say thank you and you're welcome in Chinese. 谢谢
，谢谢，谢谢，不客气，不客气，不客气。Let's try one more time. 谢谢，不客气。Excellent. Let's do a role play activity. Pretend your friend has given you a gift. You are very happy. Say thank you to him or her. Your friend should say "You're welcome" in Chinese. Take turns. Repeat as many times as you can in ten seconds. Miss Yang, practice with you. 谢谢，谢谢。You are very happy to say 谢谢。Your friend is say 不客气，不客气，不客气。谢谢，不客气。Excellent. Now let's practice say our last term. How do we say goodbye in Chinese? Please practice say 再见再见再见再见 Let's try one more time. 再见 Excellent. Miss Yang has assignment for you this week after we learn this lesson. Practice greetings we have just learned with your parents. First, practice say 你好 hello in Chinese. Number two, practice say hello politely in Chinese. 您好，您好。Number three, practice say hello teacher in Chinese. 老师好，老师好。Number four, practice say goodbye in Chinese. 再见。That concludes our lesson. It has been my pleasure having you in this class. I'm Jin Yang. See you next week. Hotep scholars, I am Professor Horton, and welcome to STEM for a second grade. Last week we talked to all about Angelina, Milo, and Susie's problem with melting popsicles. We explored ways to solve their problem by. Looking for additional information, such as the temperature outside, the size, and the shape of the popsicles. And this week, we're going to explore ways, more ways to solve this problem with what is called the design process. So engineers use the design process to solve everyday problems. And when you use the design process, you start out by asking yourself a question. So,、um, for example, we ask questions about、um, the temperature outside. We ask questions about the size and shape of the popsicles,、um, and then you explore ways to solve your problem. After you explore these ways to solve your problem, you begin to、uh, you'll narrow down some of these solutions and you'll model them. Once you model your solutions, you will evaluate what you have come up with. In the evaluation phase, so that means you'll test them out, and then you will explain what you have created to your peers. A lot of the times, in order to perfect your product, you will go back through this design process to、uh, solve any issues that you had or came up with along the way. So today. Before we look further into this design process, let's take a look at some scholars your age that solved that used this design process to solve some of their everyday problems. Let's start out with 
uh, Mo Bows, <laughs> Mr. Mosiah Bridges. Um, he actually created a company called Mo Bows, and actually, his problem, his initial problem, was that he was looking to earn more money. And so what he did was he teamed up with his grandmother, who was a retired seamstress at the time, and they came up with a bow tie company. And the name of this company is Mo Bows. So let me go ahead and, first of all, get out of the way so that we can see what Mosiah has come up with. So actually he created this, uh, they started this company when he was nine years old. And now, uh, and once again, that was to come up with some extra money. So now he has clients like Barack Obama and Steve Harvey. Look at these bow ties, look at these neckties. They even have squares, this is amazing. So what started out as just a project to earn money, um, now makes over $200,000 a year. Good job, Mo Bows. Mosiah Bridges. All right. Next, we're going to take a look at a young lady named Natalie. So, uh, Natalie, actually, her story is a little bit different. Um, her initial problem was that she was uncomfortable with her skin color um, and the texture of her hair. So she and her mom teamed up to start a comic book series called uh, Moxie, Moxie McGriffin. There we go, Moxie McGriffin. And let's take a look at some of the things that she's done with Moxie McGriffin. Not only do they have a comic book series, but also look at these products. So, so she has a line of pins. This, this is amazing. That is beautiful. Oh man, that's nice. Um, and, and in addition to her products, she also has, once again, her comic book series, Moxie McGriffin. Um, and once again, this is by a young lady named Natalie McGriffin. Good job, Natalie. Awesome. So, at this point, let's go ahead and jump back into the design process. And let's take a look at some ways that we can solve a problem. So, remember that the first problem, the first thing that you do in the design process is you ask a question. And oftentimes, this question will start with a problem. So, for me, um, the problem that I'm going to choose to start out with is the fact that as a teacher, I oftentimes have to carry around an iPad. And in the classroom, this becomes kind of cumbersome. That means this becomes a, a big job for me. I don't want to, I never want to drop the iPad, um, but I have to use it a lot. I use a stylus. Um, and I might be controlling my laptop or something in front of the classroom, but I'm still walking with the iPad. So I'm trying to figure out a way that I can solve this problem of uh, not wanting to drop the iPad. So I don't want to drop the iPad. Um, and let's see if we can come up with a solution or the beginning of the start of a solution um, to this problem and then I'll give you the opportunity to solve your own problem so let's take a look at this let's start out looking at um, the shape of the iPad so it's shaped something like this um, and I'll go ahead and fill it in as well there we go and I know that I don't want to drop it, so maybe I can do something like add, make an addition to the iPad. I can add something onto probably the back of it, and I'm thinking that it'll look something like a glove. 
so that when I'm walking around the room, I can keep my hand in the glove. Oh man. <laughs> I can keep my hand in the glove and I can still use my iPad without having to worry about dropping the glove. So this is my exploration of a solution to my problem. I want you to take your launch log and see if you can first come up with a problem and then sketch out something that you think that you can use to solve your problem. All right, and we will talk more about the design process next week. Until then, have a good day. Thank you, Ms. Horton, and thank you to all the other classroom teachers today. They all will be back next Tuesday with lessons targeted again for our first and second grade students. Tune in tomorrow, Wednesday, where we'll have lessons for grades three and four. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day, and remember, continue learning throughout the day. Hello, we're happy to have you visit Carver. We are a dual language school where our students become truly bilingual and biliterate. Welcome to Carver Dual Language. Carver. Welcome to first grade in Carver. In kindergarten and first grade, all students learn to read and write in Spanish. Welcome to fourth grade at Carver. In fourth grade, our students have the opportunity to join our robotics. Our students work together on a community project and learn to code a robot's movements. By sixth grade, Carver students are truly bilingual and biliterate. Students can fluently speak, read, and write in both Spanish and English. Carver students move on to much success in middle school, high school, and beyond. We 
celebrate Hispanic heritage throughout the year at Carver Dual Language. Each year, students develop a plan to make goods to develop and to sell at our Mercado. This is our annual fall market that classes have booths that students come together and sell their items that they've created. Staff, community members, family, parents, grandparents, all can come together, buy the goods, and celebrate Hispanic heritage together. In Carver, we have an involved PTA where parents and families can be part of our school community. Thank you for joining us on this tour. If you would like to schedule a personal tour or learn more about our school, please call 816-418-4925. Lincoln Middle. At Lincoln Middle School, students discover their talents and passions, where teachers plant the seeds of lifelong learning. I am Lincoln Middle. Where excellence is nurtured. Students develop the skills to be successful in school, career, and beyond. Je suis Lincoln Middle. Lincoln Middle is the public school where your child will thrive and grow. Open a world of possibilities. Apply today. Learn more at enrollkc.org slash Lincoln Middle. The desire to create lives within each of us. From Grammy-winning producers and musicians, to NBA stars, to Navy admirals and Medal of Honor recipients, to internationally renowned artists and beloved local muralists, Paseo graduates have been creating their own success, their own history, their own legacy since 1926. Now it's your time. Create your future at Paseo Academy of Fine and Performing Arts. Learn more at enrollkc.org slash Paseo. I love Southeast because of the culture, the band program, and restorative justice. I love Southeast because of the academics, sports, and students. I love Southeast because of the people, the energy, and the advanced classes. It's not a like. I love Southeast because the students here at Southeast are full of potential and they believe in achieving anything. We are, we are Southeast. Southeast. We stand. We shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Join the Southeast family. Enroll today. Kindergarten is great at Kansas City Public Schools. I know this, they have really good teachers. Uh, I know this is great school. They teach them stuff that I thought my kids would never be able to know at the age of five. Since deciding to send our kiddos to a neighborhood school, we've become a, even more of a part of our community. Now is the time to enroll your future kindergartner for the new school year. Visit enrollkc.org today.